All right, so I sat down to edit this video and it turns out I never filmed an intro. So welcome to Northwest Moto Garage. We're doing a build series on a CRF 450. We're gonna make it a works edition replica. But before we do that, uh, I made a big mistake when buying this bike. So about a month ago, I went to go pick this bike up. Yeah, I bought it from a local guy off of Facebook Marketplace and I missed a pretty important factor of this bike. At some point, the chain had broken so violently that it actually broke off the case saver, punched a hole straight through the clutch arm actuator and wreaked havoc inside there. Now, I didn't know this because they did actually a pretty good job of JB Weld and kind of smoldered all over. You can kind of see it in the thumbnail. But bottom line, we have to replace that case. Now, all of us already torn apart. So before we get into anything else, let's go to a time lapse. cleaned up. I actually got uh, a message from the previous owner of this bike. And he actually said he had a lot of head work done. This should actually be a new head and after cleaning it up I can definitely tell it looks a lot newer than the rest of the bike. So that'll be interesting to get into. This is obviously what we're doing this whole thing for. Again there's the top broken mount, the bottom one, and the JB Weld. Oh my gosh. Hey Ryan, why didn't you just drain the oil when it was still on the bike? Oh boy. And that's why you use epoxy floors. Or you just don't be an idiot. Here, got no play in the crank at all. All we have to do is just replace the case then. Yeah. 
we lost the footage of the rest of that time lapse, but we got the bottom end split, transmission out, crank out. This is what you guys are really here for. Check that out. We busted off the rest of the JB well with a screwdriver and a hammer. That has absolutely destroyed where that clutch arm goes. And normally the clutch arm sits in here. It pivots from the clutch cable up there. I was noticing how stiff it was, and I think that's really just what our issue is. But we've actually got the new case already delivered over here. That's obviously what it should look like there. It's nice to have a nice fresh engine case. We still got to swap over all the bearings, but we'll do that in the next video. All right, so it is the next day. I just wanted to give you guys a little update on this header. So we did finally get that dent to pop out for the most part. Um, it did start to kind of bulge in some areas. So I didn't want to freeze it again, just in case of a risk. Uh, there's definitely a lot better flow in there. So I think it's gonna function just fine. We ended up using this kind of a cable method here. We got an eyelet on that side, eyelet on that side, threads, cable in the middle. And we just fed this thing all the way through and then bolted it on the other sides and it held the pressure just fine. So that's good, that's out of the way. I did a little heat treat on it to kind of give it some color. I don't know, I think it looks pretty good, but that's just kind of the update on the header. All right, so here's the frame just sitting here on the stand. Definitely looks pretty dirty. Right here, we got the stem bearings. I already took out this race on top, but I just want to get these out before we start doing some cleaning so I can really get in those grooves. Still got the bottom one in. Now I've got this tool here off of Amazon. It's technically for a bicycle, but you can get this for a dirt bike uh, for about four times the price. This was 15 bucks. I kind of just spread these apart, use some pliers and kind of flare out these ends too so they'll grip better. That way you don't have to spend 90 bucks on a tool. You can just go ahead and get the $15 one. So put this in here from the bottom, wait for it to snap into place. Smack it on the top. Uh, I did have to use a little bit of heat on the top, so I'll probably have to use some heat on the bottom. But that's what we're gonna do so we can get this steering stem bearings replaced. So we just need to get these tires off both of these rims. We're going to be taking off the hub spokes. We need to get these cleaned up and ready for powder coat. Because we're, this has just been spray painted by hand. And we're going to get this a lot better.
Alright, so we've got our rims all cleaned up here. Got all that black paint off of there. Oh, it's just a brushed finish here with a wire wheel. I'm hoping that's gonna be enough grip for the powder coat to stick to. It should be, I can feel the texture. It's definitely not gloss or anything like that. So we've got the spokes over here. They're all nice and polished up. So you can get a better angle at those. And then the nipples. So everything's all finished up. We're gonna get these rims off to powder coat. Just gonna do a gloss black on those. Same thing, like I said, as the works edition. Just trying to match that as much as possible. Now, the hubs themselves, these are usually red when they're on the HRC Honda, but for the works edition, they're just silver, just like they would normally be from the factory. What's interesting is that these rims over here, one, we got the front rim, that's actually just still the factory DID from Japan, uh, but this rim here, Let's see if we can find it. This rear is actually a Warp 9 rim. I think it was still silver and somebody had to spray paint it over it because it was really starting to chip and flake. Uh, powder coat doesn't typically do that. So as you saw kind of there in the video, somebody did a terrible job at lacing them up. There was still like a ton of gaps that were on the ends here where the spoke actually meets the hub. So they, Half of them were tight, half of them weren't. So it's just sad to see something like that happen. For the front rim, the spokes that were on that were just too far beyond. They were still the stock ones. Uh, because these were the Warp 9 rims, the spokes were pretty new. All I did was just clean those up. The other ones had, uh, looked like they probably just used a standard wrench instead of actually using a spoke wrench. And so some of them were rounded, um, some of them were stripped out. We're just gonna end up replacing that whole set, not have to worry about it, then we'll just start off fresh, so uh, that'll just be a lot easier maintenance in the future. So here's all the parts on the table, some of the smaller stuff. We'll end up putting these in bins so they're not lost, but I'm gonna record where everything's at, where everything goes. We got all the big portion of the bike down over here, and the plastics, they're basically junk, so we threw those out and we got the new kit has arrived. Really excited about that. You guys are gonna love the graphics, love the restyle kit. It's gonna look awesome. Oh no way, these are already loose. That one's tight, that one's loose. No way. Oof. I can't believe that. Let me know if you've ever seen that before. Definitely a routine maintenance item, people always forget about their brake rotors, about their sprockets. That's a before every ride check. These are still tight. After all of that, I am so glad I actually had to take this bike all apart. Who knows how many fasteners weren't tightened down, weren't torqued to the spec. It just takes a minute, do yourself a favor, and check your fasteners.
I grabbed both of them. I guess that's one way to do it. All right, well, I'm glad I pulled those out. They still do roll. They weren't rolling at all in the hub, and that's why I was worried about them taking them out, but I think they were just set in there too deep. So I'm just gonna take these bearing seals off, repack them with grease, clean them up. And same thing with the front. One thing for sure that I'm gonna do is actually clean out the bore of these spacers. This is what will get your axle stuck. Twice a year, take your rear wheel off, take your front wheel off, clean the axle. I've had too many bikes in this shop that have seized axles. They turn one tire change into an hour and a half ordeal just because I had to get the axles out, so. And with that, that wraps up part three of this video series. Thank you so much for watching, I mean it. Uh, every view is huge to me, every comment. If you guys like this longer style of video, just let me know. If you don't, uh, want me to shorten it up and just do you know time lapses and things like that, let me know. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like this content, consider subscribing. Until next time, ride safe and live moto.